so lately I've been doing my best to catch up on a lot of shows that I've been behind on. And let's be real, it's a lot. To that end, I started a show that I had initially swept aside last season in favor of other shows, and instead of trying to salvage my dying Twitch career, like I knew I should, I decided to watch this anime. Now, the show is called The Aquatope on White Sand, or as I've come to realize, a show about how to be a terrible boss. Now, the show features two main characters, Fuka Miyazawa, a runaway former idol from Tokyo, and Kukuru Misakino, a high school girl who is serving as summer director for a failing aquarium in Okinawa. At its heart, this is a story about reaching your dreams. In Fuka's case, failing to reach her dreams and being fired as an idol. And in Kukuru's situation, having a dream of saving and or revitalizing this old aquarium. The first episode begins with Fuka heading home after her final goodbyes to the staff at her talent agency. Feeling like a total loser, a washout, and pretty much all the things a person would feel after devoting a great amount of effort into something, only to have it essentially stolen by newer, fresher talent. Instead of going home, Fuka makes a last-minute decision to go to Okinawa, and through a series of events, arrives at the aquarium, defeated and at the end of her line. Now, to be honest, I really sympathized with Fuka. I could really relate to her as a character. It's hard to admit defeat. It's hard to put a lot of effort into something and to see it really dwindle over time. And as a YouTuber, this is something that's always in the back of my, my mind. It's always something that's in the back of my thoughts. It's always difficult when you try to do something and you see that it's not succeeding or you're concerned that you're going to have to pull the plug on the whole damn thing. It's really disconcerting when you have to admit that sometimes your dream is just that. Now, on the other hand, we have Kukuru, a teenager that is so determined to make her dream come true that she's pigeonholed her objectives to the detriment of everything and everyone around her. The first episode opens with her taking makeup classes because she's missed so many days, no doubt due to her obsession with the aquarium, and instead of actually doing her assigned math homework, she instead turns in a paper on squid? Really? She's hardworking, she has a dream, and, well, to be honest, that's kind of about it. She has friends, but wastes no time in making almost everything about her and about the aquarium. And like good friends, they enable her. Now, I want to point out that Kukuru isn't in dire straits. She's not the sole breadwinner of her family, their, their livelihood isn't dependent upon her, and while the responsibilities of the aquarium are immense, they aren't weighing on her shoulders because of some undue hardship. She, herself, is solely responsible for putting that burden on her own shoulders. Eventually, Fuka and Kikuru meet, and... Fuka, most likely taken in by the exotic nature of the aquarium environment, begs for a job, and quickly gets hired. It's fortuitous, since Kukuru has almost no available staff to help. This is the makings of a great team. Fuka can work on mending her shattered sense of self-worth, and Kukuru can take one more step in trying to save her rundown aquarium. Only, it isn't, and it doesn't. This is where I found myself slamming my forehead into the top of my table in sheer frustration. This is where the whole thing derails into yet another anime of pointless struggle. First day at work in the aquarium, Kukuru abrasively chastises Fuka for wearing fingernail polish. As this is something that might contaminate the aquatic environment, it's a serious no-no, but instead of calmly pointing to it and politely asking for her to remove it, she has a mild freakout. Fuka has done something wrong, and now feels bad about it. Immediately afterward, Kukuru drags the minutes-old new hire to the penguin area and naturally expects her to be able to feed them. 
This results in the penguins biting Fuka's hands several times, Fuka dropping the fish, dropping the bucket, and running for her life when it seems as though the penguins are attacking her. And then what follows is quite possibly the best example in history of how to be an asshole boss. In no uncertain terms, Kukuru makes it brutally clear that the animals come first, that if something goes wrong, it's already too late. There is no correcting something once it's been done. And then, as if Fuka feeling terrible as possible wasn't enough, Kukuru has to drive home with, did you even care what job you got? Now the cherry on top of this is when she tells Fuka, if anything happens to our animals, I won't forgive you. It was at this point I lost all interest in whether Kukuru ever saved her aquarium. In fact, I was now totally on the side of Fuka. And before you make the argument, oh well, she's just young. Yeah, she's just young. But if she can't do her job as the director of the aquarium, then why is she the director of the aquarium? But I stuck with it. Out of a sense of obligation, I finished episode two, though the entire time, I really had to struggle to keep from flipping Kukuru the bird every five seconds. Fuka is a failure that has experienced what it's like to lose her dream, and in some sick sense of fate has now hitched her life's goal to Kukuru's dream. And the episode ends with Fuka making friends with Kukuru, which would have been fine if at any point in there Kukuru had apologized for her outrageous behavior. But she didn't. Apparently, penguin life is more valuable than human life? I lost all respect for her. In fact, I finished the episode wanting her to fail. I want Kukuru to lose the aquarium, to have it shut down, and for her dream to fall apart in her hands. Because she doesn't deserve to succeed. What separates Fuka from Kukuru is that unlike Fuka, Kukuru is selfish. She's so blinded by her ambition that she has no issues using anyone around her to further her own ends. She works their one employee nonstop, disregards her own education, and treats her workers as less valuable than the animals that they are supposed to be caring for. At no point did Kukuru seem concerned that her brand new employee had almost lost her fingers and has multiple bandages on her hands. No, because her dream comes first. Instead of properly training her new hire, showing her the ropes like a competent employer, she throws her into a situation with live animals and just watches as they bite her, overwhelm her, and nearly get themselves hurt. Kukuru is a terrible boss, and on top of that, she's a terrible person. I've worked for horrible bosses. I know what it's like to be the victim of corporation, and the callous, rich boss that looks down their nose and sees you as only a step in their ascension to success. I've watched as bosses got bonuses off of my hard work, and I got to come in the day after Christmas and work a double. Even the very worst of my jobs provided better training than what Fuka got. Maybe Kukuru grows and becomes a brilliant boss. Maybe she rectifies this situation and becomes a saint that learns to cherish her workers and appreciate them, instead of expecting them to childishly cater to her dream. I mean, seriously. Fuka was practically a victim of employer incompetence, and Kukuru's friend makes excuses for her and asks that Fuka bear with her and help her out. Really? Really? Honestly, I don't care if Kukuru becomes a better person. She had her shot, and she blew it. First impressions actually matter to me when it comes to anime. I honestly don't know if the writers of the story were just going for what they thought was maximum drama or if they were just being deliberately stupid about it. Even by Japanese business standards, Kukuru should win the award for Worst Boss. The Aquatope on White Sand was a gorgeous looking anime. It was amazing to look at, but it was terrible to watch. It had every potential of being an amazing anime, but Kukuru stole that dream away. And instead, what I got was two episodes of an anime 
that ended up putting me in a seriously foul mood. So that is my hot take on the Aquatope on White Sand. What did you guys think of it? Did you enjoy it? Did you not enjoy it? Put your comments in the comment section down below and let's get some conversation going. Thank you so much everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me sure to hit that like button. And of course, if you're new, you know what to do. Subscribe for more. If you'd like to support the channel directly, you can do so by becoming a member of my Patreon. There is a link in the description down below. You can donate as little as a dollar. I'll get a coffee, and then you will get more great videos. Have an amazing day, everyone. Keep being awesome, and I will see you all in the next video.